Hey guys, Jack here with the um, the Boomsday full cardless reveal. So I wanted to do a review of this. Um, I've done a few reviews in the past actually. None of them I uploaded because I didn't think they were high enough quality in terms of like discussing the cards. Um, but you know, um, I still enjoy making these and hopefully this goes up. So we're going to start with the Druid cards. Now Druid, this expansion, they've been pushing a bit of a Treant theme and uh, let's just say Druid's very powerful. So start off Biology Project, one mana spell. Each player gains two mana crystals. Uh, I think right off the bat, everyone recognized that this probably shouldn't have been printed for Druid. And honestly, everyone's expecting Druid to get nerfed, but I think Blizzard's going to let it stay uh, just this powerful for a while and see what happens. Um, this card is obviously powerful because you get to use the mana first. This is like Innervate, but better because it ramps you at the same time, right? It's one mana. Even though the opponent can run um, stuff like that, uh, you know, is late game. Uh, if you're like a combo deck and you're trying to get the late game, your late game is usually a lot better. So uh, this card is insanely good. I think it'll definitely see play in an aforementioned like combo or ramp based your deck because frankly your late game minions will just be better than the opponents. Dendrologist. Now, Dendrologist, Landscaping, uh, Tending Tauren, and Mulch Muncher are all part of this Treant combo. Uh, on the one hand, <clears throat> I think that landscaping is probably strong enough to see play in a token druid deck on its own um, if one exists that requires early minions. As Whereas Dendrologist, you'd want one that's more based around treants to discover a spell. And druid spells, <clears throat> they are very powerful, but I'm not completely sure how good the treant uh, archetype will be because when druid is powerful, it's because of a lot of their neutral spells, such as um, Biology Project being so good that it, another druid deck that's better might just oust it. I think the big piece in making a Treant Druid strong is actually the Mulch Muncher. The fact that you get Rush 8-8 um, eight, eight, that could potentially cost 0, and you can uh, you can summon additional copies with the other support that it has. I think Mulch Muncher is what makes this archetype potentially playable. Tending Tauren, yes, this is 6 mana for 7-8 of stats, or it can buff them. Again, this makes sense for a Treant like, token-ish type strategy, because say you play like a living mana, and then you somehow get back up to 6 mana, um, you can give them plus one, plus one. Or if you have no board, you summon more treants. Landscaping summons four, four of stats. You know, some pretty fair, uh, if not somewhat overstatted minions. But I'm unsure um, because just the way that Druid works, in the past, when there has been a good Druid deck, usually something of a similar archetype, you'll usually rise to the top and take over. <clears throat> All right, Dream Petal Florist. At the end of the turn, reduce the cost of a random minion in your hand by seven. Um... So this is one of those cards you play, and uh, the opponent has to kill immediately, or you get a lot of value. The danger in this card, I think everyone sees, is pretty much going to be its potential for combo, especially with Malagos Druid and Standard. Um, and I'll, I'll just put Flabidinous Floop in as well. Flabidinous Floop, while this is uh, in your hand, this is a 3-4 copy of the last minion you played. Consider that you play Dream Petal Florist. That hits your Malagos. Malagos is now down to 2 mana. Play 2 mana Malagos plus Flabidinous Floop. Bam, 6 mana for... 10 spell damage you play moonfire moonfire swipe they're dead so this card i think will definitely be experimented in uh a type of um malagos druid i'm not completely sure how good it'll be you know i'm not 100 percent, but i think in malagos druid i already see this combo coming to fruition again i don't know if this makes it like it can't fit the deck because it's too slow if mali druid's already good enough that it doesn't require it but it just seems to make the win condition better because now you don't need to rely on twig and twig is an extremely slow card I can see this replacing Twig pretty much. Um, the other thing is that there's also the card um, Gloop Sprayer, which summons an adjacent copy of each minion. So say you reduce Gloop Sprayer. Um, this could also, like, you know, you play Malagos the turn before, they kill the Malagos, you play this for as a 4-mana Malagos, you summon a copy of it with a 1-mana Gloop Sprayer, you bam, 5-mana, 2 Malagos, once again. So Gloop Sprayer could also um, be in one of these combo decks. Now... The other combo deck that Druid has is the, uh, is the um, not the Avocate Nanaku, and that's wild, but <clears throat> it's the Togwild Druid. So they released a card called Juicy Psych Melon. Now, Psych Melon is a lot more dangerous and wild for the reason that um, Wild Druid relies on the Aviana Kuhn combo, which means that you get Azelina, uh, Togwoggle, Aviana, and Kuhn at the 7, 8, 9, 10 slots. So this is very powerful and wild, but even in standard. People are afraid this will be used by Taunt Druid. So I think, honestly, I think all of these cards will see play. 
Biology Project, Gloop Sprayer, Psych Melon, Dream Petal Florist, Floop. Um, if Gloop Sprayer isn't that good, I could see Gloop Sprayer getting cut out. If Dream Petal Florist isn't good, I could see it getting cut out. But in no world do I see Flubidinous Floop, Biology Project, and Juicy Psych, Mel Psych Melon not seeing play. They fit the decks too well. Um, in standard, maybe Psych Melon doesn't get played, you know, but 100% in wild, that deck's going to be a thing. Even if it's not amazing, because other decks can't rise up to counter it and beat it. Um, in the first few weeks, <laughs> it'll uh, it'll run rampant, I think. Fablidinous Foop will always see play. Dream Petal Florist or Goop Square are a kind of question marks just because I don't know if the decks need them. It's just the reason Dream Petal Florist could be so good is that it's simply uh, it could simply oust um, the need for Twig, and Twig, I think, is really slow for Druid. All right, finally, we have Floop's Glorious Gloop. Uh, whenever a minion dies this turn, gain one mana crystal this turn only. Um, I'm assuming this <clears throat> would serve best for a uh, token deck. Um, the, the only issue with this, because it's a legendary spell, right, is it's kind of inconsistent because you kind of have to draw it. And with the token deck, you're not trying to rely on one-off draws. You kind of want to have, like, everything be pretty consistent early game, just all in them. Or even with the new mid-range token deck. Um, I mean, I guess this could work, but the more minions that you kill off, though... Even though you get more mana, you have to use that mana essentially to like clear the board and then use the new mana to develop. I don't see this mana as a way that like you could really gain mana to burst the opponent because um, even if you have like double savage or right, you kind of just like, I don't know, like you'd kill them with a the double savage or anyways, why clear their board? And if you need to clear their board, you use your minions to suicide. So I see this as like a board refill. But at the same time, once the game gets late enough, I don't know how good this is. So I actually, this is a big question mark for me. Uh, on the other hand, I tried to think about a world where you try to run this in a Malagos deck, which sounds weird, right? But say you play a Malagos, it survives, the opponent has a bunch of minions, and you can't kill them. Um, I don't know, because you'd be at 10 mana anyway. So yeah, I, I don't, I'm not completely sure where this fits in. Because on one hand, you could kind of use it as a refill for an, uh, for a mid rangey deck, but on the other hand, Druid already the mid range token deck already runs combos that makes it so their treants um, or so their wisps uh, summon treants. So uh, this is this probably is like a huge question mark for me. So those are the Druid cards. I think Druid uh, got some insane tools this expansion. First of all, they might have a completely new archetype with the treants. Second of all, uh, Malagos is wildly improved, and same thing with uh, Togwoggle because now Forbidden the Swoop ensures that you can get. Um, another togwaggle off so i don't know uh very dangerous <laughs> all right next class we're gonna go to hunter <clears throat> now hunter bomb toss um possible to see play in spell hunter uh actually i don't think it'll see play in spell hunter because you have grievous bites already which is two mana deal two plus it deals one to additional things you don't really need the goblin bomb in spell hunter i don't think that'll be in play but it seems like a decent card all around i'm just not sure if this death rattle bomb deck will work because i mean it's going to be mech based synergy right so i haven't looked at all the neutral mechs yet but in order for this card to see play i think that a neutral death rattle mech deck would have to synergize well with hunter or sorry there'll have to be enough neutral death rattles or, or mechs i suppose that can either magnetize to hunter's death rattle mechs or um or support them this is the same idea I have with Boom Master Flark. This card loses a lot of tempo because it's 7 mana 5-5, five, five, but we already see some Egg Hunters popping up. However, the Goblin Bombs don't summon anything. They only deal damage to the hero, uh, deal 2 damage. So, if you want to trigger the battle, uh, the Death Rattle a bunch of times, you're not really getting bored, and you're kind of losing tempo for that. So I'm not I'm not completely excited about this card. I'm more thinking bob, uh, Bomb Toss is kind of useful because it helps clear something on the board, and it gives you a mech body that you can magnetize things to to trade. And it has the upside of it has a slight death rattle. Uh, Flark just doesn't seem as impressive as Bomb Toss does. Um, Cybertech Chip. Uh, I just don't see this card seeing play for the sense that it's too slow for a hunter deck. It's kind of like draw, right? And especially in a mech deck, it's maybe even better than draw. But the other ones with Beast never saw play. I don't think this will see play. Even if you get it on two minions. Yeah, you draw two random cards. But what else could you have done for two mana that you know maybe gets you more bored, right? All right, Fireworks Tech. Give friendly mech plus one plus one if it has death rattle triggered. Uh, so this is what I mean though by like hunter has death rattle and mech synergy. Um, so you put this on a goblin bomb, right? Goblin bomb is now a one three and you dealt two damage to the enemy hero. I don't think that's that impressive. But say you put it on like a better death rattle, like a spider bomb. <laughs> well, with spider bomb you've just destroyed an enemy minion and made a three three. So 
if there's cards that support spider bomb plus firework tech i think that combo is insane and speaking of spider bomb <clears throat> i actually think this card's great this is magnetic which means you can trade into something kill it and it destroys another minion so if hunter is able to play a slow enough game this is good um i just worry that like it won't kill people fast enough like the turnover won't be fast enough like the other recruit hunter decks that you can kill them before their combos come in because i think once you get later in the game you start competing with combo decks such as shutterlock such as the druid combos uh and i don't know if it can do that venomizer 2-2 two -two magnetic poisonous um <clears throat> Requires good mechs for this to be useful. This obviously doesn't have rush, but if you have a minion on the board magnetic too, gives it poisonous. That's really good. Flark's Boomzooka. This requires that you're running three big minions um, or death rattle minions. And yeah, supports a death rattle play. The nice thing is that this doesn't require it to have mech synergy. Um, this is just if you play it in death rattle. So if there's like a death rattle recruit deck, such as the Egg Hunter, maybe you start teching for more late game stuff, such as uh, Savannah High Mains. I think this card will see play. Or at least experimentation. Goblin Prank, give a friendly minion plus three, plus three, and rush, it dies at the end of the next turn. So, I'm thinking of power, uh, what is that card? Uh, the Power Overwhelming, the old Warlock card. That was just plus four, plus four, it dies at the end of this turn, it had no rush. Um, this is two mana, potentially you can do an extra three damage. The Power Overwhelming was often used, though, in degenerate, like, OTK things. Uh, this can't really OTK as well. I mean, I guess it could. It's plus three, plus three, but it costs more mana. Um, dies at the end of turn. So, I mean, I guess this might see it play in a Death Rattle deck. I mean, you can play, like, what, Egg? Your Egg becomes a four mana, three, six, but you take two cards. After it dies, it becomes a... Uh, it survives for an extra turn, and then it becomes... Um... Oh, wait. It dies at the end of turn. Okay, uh, my bad. So, you play Egg. 3 mana, zero, uh, zero, 0, You play this, three, 4 mana, 3, 6 for 2 cards. You trade it into something. Death Rattle activates. Mm. I don't know. I think there's better ways to enable the Death Rattle, such as Firework Tech. Now, obviously, this can't trigger Egg because it's not a mech, but still. I think the fact that this takes a 2-card combo for something that potentially has better triggers, I don't know. Necromechanic. Death Rattle Stricker twice. Um, this is one that I could see um, <clears throat> in a world. You know, I thought Egg Hunter would be too slow, right, with the uh, cubes. But the meta slowed down so much that Egg Hunter with cube actually worked. So if you somehow get this on the board to stick and activate a Death Rattle, this is very dangerous. This is one of those soft taunt cards that your opponent has to kill. But there's the other 5 mana 4 6 uh, Corpse Widow that also kind of has soft taunt. So this has to compete with Corpse Widow. Will it beat it out? I don't know. It depends on if people want discounts on death rattles or if they want double triggers. Um, I think the double trigger is slower, but it ends up being more powerful. But I think grabbing tempo might be more important. So right now, I'm kind of in the Corpse Widow camp that this can't see play only because Corpse Widow fits in the same window. But maybe not. And a secret plan. <clears throat> Simply, um, I think there's too many good hunter spells already for this to be ran in Spell Hunter. I don't really think secret plan will be that good. Alright. Next up is Mage. So Mage getting the interesting tools of the um, the spell damage stuff. For one, uh, I mean, we'll start with Cosmic Anomaly. This is some uh, power creep on the old, ye old uh, Cobalt Geomancer. Now, Cobalt Geomancer was a, I don't know, was it was a it was a card mostly used in OTKs. Um, by pushing up the stats, you make this seem like it wants to be in a more uh, tempo-oriented deck, where you have this plus spell damage. And while it's true that, yes, this enables your next spell pretty much, or I mean, not enables, but if it sticks on the board, your next turn, if you have spells in hand, are very strong. Uh, it's still a 4-mana 4-3, so it can be taken out pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> what I'm more excited about is Celestial Emissary. Your next spell this turn has plus 2 spell damage. So... I think that because this is cheap and gives plus two spell damage, and plus you do really only cast one, this means that it, it's not enabled for an OTK, but it helps cards like the um, the Arcan Explosions, uh, making it be like a two mana deal three. So I actually think this card, this might help in a, uh, in a more controlling deck, but I'm not sure if that kind of mage deck exists right now in the sense that I think the current ones that exist are kind of like more big spell focused uh, that fatigue your opponent. Um, sacrificing the two cards for this combo to generate early game tempo, I'm not sure how great that is. I don't think Cosmic Anomaly, like, 
is just strong enough on its own. Four mana, four, three, plus two spell damage. All right, Astromancer, summon a random minion with cost equal to your hand size. So yeah, this is what I mean, though. This is part of the hand size mage um, thing, where they're trying to push Meteorologist and Astromancer. Now, uh, hand size mage also Astral Rift and Research Project also help out. So maybe these fit into the existing shell of a... Um, of a mage deck. But at the same time, you have to consider Big Spell Mage existed, and you didn't play Spiteful Summoner in it. And this is a 7 mana 5 5. Slightly, I say the results would be slightly better than Spiteful Summoner because, you know, Big Spell Mage ran 5 mana spells, and I think it ran Mirror Force, uh, or yeah, Mirror, uh, not Mirror Force, I think of Yu Gi Oh! Um, the one, uh, Ice Block. Um, so more consistent i guess than uh something like spiteful summoner seven mana five five maybe you're summoning like what six or seven cards because you play this on turn seven say you have like five six seven cards in your hand you summon a six mana minion five mana minion seven mana minion i guess that's okay but for control decks nowadays i don't know if it's good enough to just put stats on the board um without any way to like really threaten your opponent and you're gonna be so far behind if you have that many cards in hand anyways that i don't know if hand size mage is really that useful for that reason i also don't think astral rift is that great um even though it's two mana draw two i suppose it's not drawing you to a combo it's not drawing you to your game plan it's just adding more value and uh value mage can't exist right now because shutter walk and other combos exist uh, meaning that value mage cannot outgrind like it used to in the old days i'd say these cards were pretty good like if this was a year or two ago these would be pretty good i mean pre-jade of course pre-jade these would be really good but now I don't think value decks work out really well. Um, research project, however, I think this card actually will see play because you draw two cards and this threatens the opponent um, to mill them, right? Uh, mage, like I said for a value mage, I mean, I know I, this might contradict what I just said, but I don't think a value mage can exist because uh, Shutterwalk exists, but this gives them a chance to at least mill those cards. And while milling isn't as great as people think it is, because you have like a 1 in 20 chance of actually milling what you want as opposed to just drawing them further toward your combo. That chance of just instantly winning the game is actually powerful um, and underrated. That's why like uh, Dirty Rat is so good. That's a 2 mana 2 6. And yes, you could just fluke it and it hits something else big. And if you don't, if you can't deal with it, it kind of sucks. You also have the chance of just winning the game by pulling out their Shutter Walk and uh, polying it. So for the same reason, I think. Research Project is pretty good because you might draw them cards and you might draw them closer to your combo, but you're also getting closer to your cards and you potentially can mill them. So it holds a dual purpose. It's Cold Light without the body. Um, Cold Light was only played in Exodia Mage. Uh, and Exodia Mage doesn't... I mean, it still exists, but... Um, I don't know. Maybe this maybe this actually helps enable Exodia Mage a bit more. Uh, I think without Ice Block, though, it's pretty challenging overall. Meteorologist. I don't think this card is very good. I think Astromancer and Meteorologist won't see play. I don't think a hand size mage really works. Um, even so, if you play Meteorologist with like five cards in hand, six cards in hand, sure you deal six random damage. That's like playing two arcane into uh, arcane missiles, and you have a three three on the board. I don't think it does consistent enough removal. It potentially could hit face, which means you're not even removing minions. And I'm assuming this is more of a controlling deck. I don't see the purpose of hitting face because it'd be like burn. I just don't see Meteorologist as good. Um, Luna's Pocket Galaxy. I also don't think Luna's Pocket Galaxy is actually very good. I know people are excited about this card, but reducing the cost of minions in your deck to one only matters like if you play a combo. If you draw those cards already, that kind of sucks. So unless a deck exists that is so good because you can combo with it, I can't see that happening. And right now I just don't see that deck existing. I could be completely wrong. Like maybe it's just worth running and putting Malagos and Antonidas and other things in your deck just to see if you can potentially get the combo. Uh, the review video was really funny. It was this uh, Chinese uh, group. They did it where the um, the girl, the Jaina uh, cosplayer, she drew this card, played it, then the next consecutive terms um, played Stargazer Luna and played Antonidas and four uh, Sork Apprentices and just, you know, blow them up. Hilarious, but wow, is that rare to happen. And, uh, Maybe it happens more often than I'm saying it will, and maybe that's what makes the deck work. But right now, I just don't think that will happen very often, so I don't think it's good. Unexpected results. Summon two random, two cost minions, improved by spell damage. This is why it synergizes with Celestial Emissary and Cosmic Anomaly. If this gets plus two spell damage, you're summoning two uh, four cost minions. So place on turn six, two card combo. You get a two one, two four cost minions for six mana and two cards. 
Um, yes, great combo, but what does it fit into? That's what I don't know. Uh, I think even though like you, when you, whenever we uh, review cards, right, we review the individual power level, but we also have to consider what decks they fit into. And this is something that people often criticize um, Trump SC, Trump Starcraft, uh, for doing when he reviews cards is he might rate a super powerful card a low star rating. It's because like even if a card is great with no deck to fit into, uh, it's going to 100% suffer and it won't see play, right? So I think this card's great on its own. Um, you know, four mana for two two twos or for you know like i would say at least like four four of stats probably and that's fair that's a fair card it's not a good card it's not a great card it's a fair card but then it has the upside of spell damage and i think that's what pushes it to slightly better than that I, I shouldn't have said great i think this is slightly better than good but is there a deck where you can run all these things and actually win the game and summon strong minions well that seems like what a tempo deck wants to do right but you lose tempo in order to gain tempo um, and that seems very risky and inconsistent, which is why I don't think it'll see play. Finally, Stargazer Luna. After you play the rightmost card in your hand, draw a card. This helps with Mage's value. Maybe this gets played in a burn deck. Maybe this gets played in the control decks. I don't know. I think it'll 100% be tested. Uh, if it generates enough advantage, uh, card advantage with the um, draw card, maybe it'll be played. But... It's a big question mark for me because if you're playing a control deck, your cards often cost too much mana. And if you're playing a burn deck, um, you have to keep drawing burn. So, I mean, it could be the Hail Mary card, just like Aluneth, or it could fail miserably. So those are the mage cards. We go to Paladin next. All right. First Paladin card, Anoia module. Uh, so this is just two Anoiatrons stuck together. Hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, on its by itself, I think Anoia module is kind of shitty. Four mana, two four, taunt divine shield. It's not very good, but magnetic makes it much better. And if you look at the other paladin cards that exist, Mechano Egg, Glotron. This is not a mech, but other neutral mechs. I have not looked at the neutral mechs yet, and with that in mind, I probably should have looked at the neutral cards first. But we're already here, so I'll use the same caveat. I don't think Paladin has any great synergy with Death Rattle, even with Divine Shield that much right now. Even with healing, this has Divine Shield, Lifesteal, healing is double. I don't think healing matters too much in this meta right now. But if there are enough good neutral mechs, the fact that you have these three cards, which on their own are not bad, I think Glotron's good because... It's a 1-mana card for 1-3, which is great on turn 1, but as the game goes on, those get much shittier. Because it has Magnetic, it actually has potential to be useful in buffing one of your cards. So now it's a plus 1, plus 3 buff for 1-mana, which actually is very good. Mechano Egg, very slow card, but if you can get that one Taunt Magnetic that I saw in a, in Neutral um, during the card reveal, this card could work. It's very slow, though. And they have Candor's Endless Army which is a huge endgame for this mech uh, mid-range deck. My biggest concern with the mechanical thing is that, once again, you're sacrificing tempo to gain like a swing in the future, which could work. I, I think Hunter makes it work right now with their Death Rattle deck. It's just, I don't know if Paladin can make it work. Uh, I'll reconsider once I look at the neutral cards, but these cards all tie in together with this archetype. It has to work together for it to be useful. Okay, Auto Defense Matrix. I don't think Paladin Secrets are almost ever worth running unless there's enough synergy in the uh, metagame. But I think that this card uh, will certainly be discovered by Hydrologist and anyone who plays Hydrologist. Actually, wait, is Hydrologist in standard? I don't remember. But if there's a card that discovers secrets, this will be used because it's a bit different than, uh, um, than Noble Sacrifice. And it can't defend face, but it gives a minion Divine Shield, which means potentially you're dealing more damage to the minion that it's attacking. So I think this card... We'll see play, not because it's put in decks, but it'll be discovered at some point if there's secret discovery. I don't remember if Hydrologist is in the metagame, though. Crystal Smith can Kangor. If Healedin is a thing, sure. But I think the other decks don't care about healing. The other control decks you're trying to fight use their combo base. So I don't think this will see play, at least right now. Crystallogy. Some, uh, draw two, one cost, one attack minions from your deck. Well, this can't go into Odd Paladin, because it's not odd. And... 
does I think Ian Paladin was creeping back up, so if uh, if even Paladin wants more consistent draw, just tutoring one drops, sure, why not? Glowstone Technician, Battlecry, give all minions your hand, plus two, plus two. Um, this is even, not odd, plus you need a good amount of minions in hand, but say you only have... You have to wait until turn six before getting this off, and you'd have to be playing a bunch of small minions, so I don't think this card's that good. Prismatic Lens, draw minion, and a spell from your deck, swap their cost. I think this fits well in the control deck, but control paladin deck doesn't work super well right now, and mechs seem more mid-range, so I don't think this will see play. Same thing with Shrink Ray. You already have equality. I don't think you need to run a second one. Even though this sets their attack to one, a lot of decks are either token or care about the effects. Not many decks do raw uh, stats anymore, I guess. Um, so a lot of decks have like death rattles and like other effects you want to remove from the minions. This doesn't do that. So I think Paladin didn't get a great set of cards, but I mean, much like Mage, I don't think it got a great set of cards, but it has the potential in the mech archetype if that's strong enough on its own. Let's go to Priest. Alright. I'm going to preface this by saying I think all the Priest cards suck ass for the most part. Um, cloning Device, discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck. Wow, I think that's really bad. Dead Ringer, draw Death Rattle Minion from deck. I think this helps the uh, Death Rattle Priest archetype. So, hey, they get a new toy, and I think that deck is not too bad, because even though it's a value deck, you have Benedictus, you can copy stuff. It still loses the combos, but it can drown out other control decks. Extra Arms, plus two, plus two, and then it gives the other plus two, plus two. I think this card's not good. Omega Medic, I think this card's good, but again, I don't think we're in a meta where restoring health matters very much, so I don't think it'll see play. Replicate. I don't see any good enough cards to replicate, really, that, like, are cheap. Reckless Experimenter, good for the Death Rattle deck. Um, test Subject, Death Rattle decks are not running buffs. Not Will not see play. This will see play uh, in the aforementioned deck, the, uh, the quest one. Whether or not that'll be good, I don't think it'll be great. Uh, but I don't think it'll be garbage either. Because, again, it drowns out any other control strategy except for the combo ones. Topsy Turvy, swap a minion's attack and health. Um, this actually might see play. This is a cheaper inner fire. Yeah, combo priest has existed for a while. It's not tier one right now, but it floats back up every once in a while. This is a cheaper inner fire. I think this will see play. Plus, it uh, it can be used offensively against opponent's minions to reduce their health. So it'll see play. Yeah, Zerk's Master Cloner. If you cast any spells on this minion, resummon it. I don't uh, think this is too slow. I mean, I think it'll be put in the Death Rattle deck, and maybe the Death Rattle deck will add these and then add this for more value. But then you have too much value and not enough tempo, and you're really only going to cheese wins off of bad draws. And you're still going to lose to the, like, the hardcore, like really greedy combo decks like Shutterwalk. Um, even though this is trying to outgreed those, it won't. It's not going to work. And uh, Zerk's Cloning Gallery, summon a 1-1 copy of each of in your deck. Um, this instantly completes quests for you if you're pretty much playing Death Rattles, but... I don't think this is very good, at least in standard. Maybe in wild it's great. In standard, I don't think there's enough good cards that you're summoning these. So, Priest, you got some cool tools for your uh, for your Quest Priest deck. But I think, sadly, well, I fucking hate Quest Priest. So, uh, I think Quest Priest, it drowns out other control decks. It's annoying, but it's beaten by Shutterwalk right now. So, I don't see this rising to tier 1. <clears throat> Alright, Rogue. Academic Espionage. Wow, this card's awesome. Will it see play? I'm honestly not sure, because could there be a Miracle deck where this, this... Because I don't even want to call this a value deck, right? Because you don't need to put this in a deck that requires value. You can just use this on its own and then draw a bunch of cards and it's good. So Myra's plus Academic Espionage is great. Um, I just am not sure how to build around it. Bright Nozzle Crawler. Summon a 1-1 one, one Ooze with Poisonous and Rush. Uh, I think it's a bit slow because it's Death Rattle, so it probably isn't good enough. Crazed Chemist, combo give a friendly minion plus four attack. Plus four is a lot of attack. That's giving a cold blood on a 4-4 four, four body. But it costs five mana. And it's combo. As great of a card as it is, <clears throat> and it has a lot of good things going for it. I'm about to make a, I guess, a very uh, bold prediction and say it's a bad card. Because uh, I'm trying to think right now, but 
at five mana, you have to play another card in front of this and play this in order to get the plus four attack buff. The buff is better on like Cold Blood than it is on a four four body. I know bundling things are good, but when you need to combo and you're trying to OTK someone, the four four body doesn't matter as much. So if I guess if Miracle Rogue or Aggro Rogue is desperate enough, they'll run the card. But until that happens, I can't see it seeing play right now. I could be wrong, but I think the other cards are too good. Lab Recruiter, shuffle three for copies of a friendly minion into your deck. Um, so this card got rated really highly, but I mean, I, there's some strategies it helps, like the Death Rattle ones and the uh, very fatigue heavy ones, but I don't think this is good for Odd or for um, for Miracle, really. I think it'll see play, but I don't think it's great in the Odd and Miracle deck. I think it'll be seen in a value like the Kingsbane one. We have Rot Spring. Uh, I, I don't think this will see play because it's a 5-mana 4-2 death rattle uh, that you have to discover the effect, which, I mean, I, I guess is good because you have three options, but some of the death rattle effects right now aren't very good. And the other thing is that <clears throat> you add a minion to your hand, but really, you know, rogue strategy right now is to kill you. The value strategy isn't great, and I think that Kingsbane's already good enough, like, is already, like, this doesn't really help Kingsbane, which is the only value-oriented rogue deck that works. Maybe they tr maybe this all puts together a death rattle strategy that I'm not seeing, but yeah, uh, Miles Unstable Element I think is a great card. This got rated kind of low, but wow for a miracle deck, this card seems amazing. Um, because some miracle decks don't even run Gadgetan anymore, this could just be Sprint Sprint and un Miles Unstable as your uh, as your draw cards now. I think this would be great in Miracle, and I think Miracle will be great at the beginning expansion. And then it'll see, it might fall off because Miracle usually is one of those decks that's very strong in the beginning, just like Hunter, I, if you're a skilled pilot, of course, and then eventually falls off from more optimized decks. Um, Necrium Blade, trigger of Death Rattle, random friend of the minion. I think this card's great. It'll only see play if Death Rattle see play. I don't know if that'll happen. Necrium Vile, trigger of friend of the minion's Death Rattle twice. I think even in a Death Rattle deck, this is kind of slow and bad, but I could be completely wrong. Pogo Hopper, this could generate an entirely new. Uh, could, archetype with mechs plus pogo hopper uh, it's very slow you got to shuffle using lab recruiter but could it happen maybe jades were really good the first one you play is a one one then three three then five five then seven seven then nine nine so one one is the first three three is the second five five is the third um seven seven is the fourth nine nine is the fifth but how often are you going to draw these my real concern is that even if you can shuffle them to get more you'd have to draw them or you need like shadow steps and stuff maybe it's actually a good card um, but I don't see it being a good early game card. So in the current decks that exist, this can't see play. Violet Haze, add two random death rattle cards to your hand. I think this card, uh, while it draws two, it's a three mana draw two. Um, these are random death rattles, which could be really bad. Uh, and a death rattle deck does not currently exist. That's good because value isn't really good right now. Again, it could oust warrior. Like, again, the, the fucking, the mage decks, the rogue decks, the priest decks, the, these value decks... In the past, would have been good. Like, in the past, they could have beaten Warrior, they could have beaten Warlock. But nowadays, combo decks exist, such as Taunt Druid, Malagos, uh, Togwoggle, Shutterwalk. Those decks exist, when you, meaning these value decks don't really do well unless you're playing against fucking Control Warrior. So, I just, I, like, it, I would be astounded if, uh, if these decks are good enough. Because, I mean, I'm already astounded that Hunter is good enough. So, I'm not saying, like, it's impossible. I'm just saying, like, I don't have a complete understanding of um, of why. I mean, I know Hunter has the potential of just killing the opponent with the uh, giant minions it recruits, so that makes sense. I just don't know how you win the game against Shutterwalks. And Shutterwalk is like a tier 1 deck, pretty much. Like, it floats, it has some bad matchups, but it does such a good job of controlling that even aggro doesn't completely destroy it, so... Yeah. Alright, Shaman... Speakered Lightning, deal one damage to all minions. Oh, that's actually a pretty interesting card. Uh, huh. Overload 2, though. Shit. Hmm. So, Whirlwind. Zero mana Whirlwind that costs you the next turn. Wow, that's great with spell damage. But you have a one-fourth chance of getting spell damage. So, I, th <laughs> I think it's a great card, but I think it'll be experimented in Shutterwalk, but I don't know if it'll see play. Electra Storm Surge, I think that's a great card. It'll see play in Shutterwalk because it can play your Lightning Storms, your Volcanoes twice. 
elementary reaction. Draw a card, copy it if you played an elemental last turn. Um... I think it'll see play even in non-elemental decks because it cycles, and uh, and sh and I believe Shutterwalk plays Grumble in some other elementals too. So I think it'll make play in Shutterwalk. Eureka! Summon a copy of a random minion from your hand. Uh, it's possible that that ends up uh, creating a Malago Shaman deck, and I think that's entirely possible. So this could mean Malago Shaman is a thing again. Uh, other than that, I don't see it seeing play in current Shutterwalk. Um, menacing Nimbus at a random elemental to your hand. Uh, great card for elementals. Uh, elemental does not exist right now because it wasn't good enough. Oh, Mega Mind, if you have 10 mana crystals, your spells have life steal this turn. Great card. Uh, heals you up. Um, I still think it doesn't replace Healing Rain because Healing Rain can be played earlier. This would have to be played at 10 mana. But a uh, good card nonetheless, and I think it'll see experimentation. Storm Chaser, draw a spell from your deck that costs 5 or more. Um, again, these cards are all pretty decent on their own. They're all going to be experimented in Shutterwalk, and then that's when we'll see which ones stay and which ones will be cut. Uh, I think Storm Chaser might be on the weaker end, but at the same time, it draws out your Volcano. Um, but you only have two Volcanoes anyways, right? So maybe you only play one of these. Uh, Stormbringer. We'll see play in a uh, Totem deck, but I think people will realize that maybe this isn't amazing, because Legendaries aren't as good as they used to be in terms of just being big cards. We'll take first. Summon two one one Sparks with Rush Overload. Um, does less damage than uh, Lightning Bolt. But the uh, things stay around. I think Lightning Bolt's better. For now, at least. For the current purposes. Thunderhead. After you play a card with Overload, summon two one one sparks. Okay! So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Elementals... Okay, I forgot about this card. Maybe an Elemental deck will work just because of Thunderhead. Because if you can just play cards that Overload... Because first of all, Overload, um, on the turn you play them, is very good. So, such as Voltaic Burst. You summon. You play Voltaic Burst, you're going to summon another two two one ones with Rush. That's actually really good, but uh, will it be able to take over the game and win? I don't know. You have like cards like Bloodlust. Um, maybe this is playing an elemental token deck, but I don't know which cards are which elemental cards are small enough that you can do that in. Hmm. Shaman got some interesting cards to support Shutterwalk. Maybe none of them will see play. Maybe some of them will. Uh, they'll all be experimented, of course, because um, individually they all do something that the deck wants, but. Um, I think in a month or so, we'll actually see which ones are the best, most optimal to be actually put in there. Alright, Warlock. Demonic Project. Yes, uh, this will see play as a counter to Shutterwalk. I think even if it's not good, it'll see play just because of the fact that a Control Warlock deck needs to be able to beat Shutterwalk, and you play that to do it. Double Impling. Impling. Um, I don't think Heal Lock will play it, uh, and I don't think it's... I mean, I know it's it's a demon that copies itself because of Void Analyst. And Void Analyst into this card is actually pretty crazy because you pay only, you only get the 2-2 two -two on the first turn. But the next turn, you get 6-6, six -six, which is actually pretty insane. Um, but I think it's hard to decide whether or not Kelseth or Double Void Analyst Dever Vulgar Humunculi are better. I hate Kelseth as a card, so I hope Void Analyst and Humunculi are better, but man, these cards also seem kind of annoying. So potentially these oust, or the, specifically Analyst will oust Kelseth, potentially. Doubling Impling, I think we'll see play. Three mana for four four stats in a token deck, or in a, uh, sorry, in a zoo deck. Even Heal Zoo right now, despite probably, despite this not being great in a Heal Zoo, if Demon Zoo comes back, it'll be good. Dr. Morgan, what a bad card. I'm going to talk about it. Ectomancy. Summon copies of all demons you control. Wait. Oh, this could be a one-of in, uh, in cube. Because you could kill your cube. Okay, so turn before you summon your... Uh, what is it called? You summon your um, Doom Guard. You cube the Doom Guard the turn after. You kill it. You have two more Doom Guards in your face. You've done 15 damage. The next turn... Even if you have, uh, even if you don't have cube, plus another dark pack, you run ectomancy in that deck. I think ectomancy is only a one of. You either ectomancy cubes or you get more uh, void lords. I think this will see as a one of. I think it'll see experimentation, and then the optimal number of this that you run is just one. I'm actually pretty confident in that because I don't think running two is great because you already have the uh, cube uh, combo. But I think running one gives you additional reach for that combo. 
but it is possible that it floods the deck a bit too much and maybe you don't run any but I, i'm pretty confident that you'll have one in the cube deck all right now they're soul buster gain one damage for each damage your hero is taken this turn uh for three mana you want three four worth of stats this is two five two four worth of stats so if you just take one damage it's a three mana two five it makes sense in the demon zoo but in order for it to work well your hero has to take damage um therefore i actually don't think this card is going to see play because the uh darkshire councilman was a good card because it could gain power over turns but this is only on the turn that you play it so if you tap take two damage you draw a card this is a three mana three five but you've also tapped and you've wasted the mana and this isn't worth five mana for three five so i don't know i don't think this card's that great omega agent uh, i think this card's being undervalued well i don't think it's necessarily great right now i mean i know people said it was busted in reno which is true um, i think it's a bit undervalued only in the sense that like on an individual level because i think summoning three four fives for five mana is actually crazy good it's just I don't see a deck it fits into. So while people underrated the sheer power of it, um, they are not incorrect in this fact that like it probably won't see play only because like there really is not a good deck. Soul Infusion, give the less most minion in your hand plus two plus two. Uh, left means you've kept it for a while. Um, this, which means this is pretty shitty in a combo deck, but for a zoo deck, you pray to God that your double imp um, stays there because if you give that plus two plus two, that's a three mana, well, I guess four mana, eight, eight. Uh, for two cards, which is actually really good. Uh, so, I think people will experiment with it, and it really depends on how consistently you can manipulate your hand. Uh, because this is really interesting. Um, Spirit Bomb, deal four damage to a minion and your hero. Uh, I think this card will be experimented, and we'll see if it sees play, because I'm not too certain right now. Uh, Dark Bomb was a card that was really good. Uh, this only deals damage to minions, however. Um, there's a three mana deal four Shadow Bolt that is not being not seeing play. I think Shadow Bolt's in standard. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so because that's not seeing play, oh man, I'm making a big guess here because I don't even know if Shadow Bolt's in standard anymore. Mm, still, uh, I think the downside of dealing four to your hero isn't bad. I just think that uh, I don't know if dealing four to a minion right now is 100 percent necessary if there is strong enough mid range minions. But because it's two mana deal four, you could get a tempo play out. So maybe it does see play. Solarium, uh, this card's fucking crazy. I don't think it should have been printed as a legendary spell. I think that a legendary warlock spell should have been some grand, like, 8 or 10 mana spell. Um, I think instead this should have been an epic card that costs, like, 3 mana. 3 mana, draw 3, discard all 3 if you don't use them. I think that would have been cool. And then play it as an epic so it's actually consistent and it gives uh, discard warlock, like, better tools. Um, even though this card individually would, is more insane because it only costs 1 mana, the problem is that you actually have to draw it. Uh, and... I don't like how much variance this causes. It's it's the same fucking reason I hate Kelseth because if they draw it, it's so good, and if they don't draw it, their deck is just meh. So I hate this card, but it's really strong. It'll 100% see play, even if not even if Zoo doesn't run discards, it'll just see play in Zoo because it's one mana draw three, and it doesn't matter if you discard the other cards. I mean, tracking is run in Hunter, right? And that means you can search for exactly a good card. This one just puts all three in your hand, so at low mana cost, it's kind of like tracking. Because, I mean, you have to play the card, of course, so at low mana cost, it's kind of like tracking. At high mana cost, wow, you can probably play all of the cards if this is like a zoo deck. Okay, so that's Warlock. Now, finally, we go to Warrior. Um, Beryllium Nullifier. There's that card the, the, with the battle card that destroys mech, so if this gets good, it's fucking bad. Dr. Boom, Mad Genius. I'm angry how inconsistent hero powers are, but I think the card's great. I hope Warrior gets stronger because of it, because I'm a OG Control Warrior player. Dine Omatic. Deal 5 damage randomly split among all minions except mechs. The fact that it deals damage to minions is really good, uh, but it's a 3 4 body and 5 mana mech. Uh, I think Control Warrior has better stabby cards than that. Turn him Rover. Uh, this is great because a Control Warrior mech deck. Uh, well, you won't have to run Armorsmith, and you have Eternum Rover, which things can magnetize to. Um, wow, that's a dangerous card for Aggro to play against. Does Aggro really exist? Not really. Um, but I think Eternum Rover 100% sees play. Omega Assembly. What can I say? It's broken. You draw three cards with it. Or you discover a card if it's before that. It's broken. Uh, and Warrior needs some broken cards to even compete right now. 
these cards don't help them beat things like Shutterwalk. Now, as the Azalina changes do, but these cards make it so Warrior can actually slightly compete with the other greedy value decks, like the Priests and the other Death Rattle shit that annoys the hell out of Warrior players. Um, Rocket Boots, give a minion rush, draw a card. <laughs> Man, if that was charge. But um, the drawing of cards very important. The rush is pretty good. If a mech-based control warrior deck exists, I think this is a pretty decent card because you can shoot the mech into it. Um, if a mech-based warrior deck does not exist and we're playing uh, your standard control warrior, Rocket Boots isn't very good because you don't have two minions you want to just rush draw a card with. Um, Security Rover, whenever this minion takes damage, someone 2-3 taunt uh, has potential um, because, it's, I mean, as soon as it takes its first damage, like even if you kill it and one-shot it, it's whenever it takes damage, not whenever it survives, which means at the minimum you're going to get... Five, six, seven, eight, four, seven of stats for six, which albeit isn't great, but it has the additional ability of, you know, potentially going further than that. So, uh, this card has potential. Same thing with Super Collider. Um, Warrior struggles with removing two minions. You have Shield Slams. Uh, you even have Reckless Flurry, which is pretty good. But Super Collider makes it so that you don't have to expend your Shield Slam on just one minion and leaving another up. You can attack them into each other and potentially kill them. I think this card will see experimentation. Like. I think all the cards will see experimentation. I just think Beryllium Nullifier and Dynamomatic are probably the two like ones that kind of suck a bit more. It's potential that they do see play, but if they're good enough, then people just start running the mech counter card for it. So yeah, Weapons Project. Oh yeah, Weapons Project also insane. Like every Warrior card of this expansion is actually pretty good. Beryllium Nullifier is like kind of the, but the fact that it's magnetic and you just slap it on something is good. The problem is it's at 7 mana. If this was at, like, even if this was, like, a 5 mana, like, 2-6 or something, I think it would have a better chance of being seeing play. 5 mana, 2-6 with, like, taunt. But this has magnetic. That's the real, I mean, or sorry, it's 7 mana. That's the real kicker for this one. And Dynamomatic, just, it only deals 5 randomly split, and it's only a 3-4 body. I just don't think those do enough. Boom ship. Wow, crazy with Omega Assembly. Enough said, this card's getting played. It has Rush. Warrior needs stuff that can remove and build. Like, they need things for tempo swing. This card's necessary. Um, and Weapons Project's insane, because you equip a 2-3 weapon for 2 mana. Yes, you give your opponent one, and yes, they get 6 armor. But, boy, does that not matter, because when you clear their board, you don't give a shit. So, Warrior got some insane cards this expansion. I hope to God it's strong enough for a Control Warrior deck, because I love Control Warrior, so... Yeah. All right, finally, on to the neutrals. Um, is there a way to organize this by mana cost? Uh, no. Okay. Arcane Dynamo. Discover a spell that costs five or more. Too slow. Whenever you shuffle a card into copy, shuffle an extra copy, this would be good for a value deck. Uh, I'm not sure if those are, can exist in the current metagame, but it will see play. Um, Brainstormer, gain plus one health for each spell in your hand. Interesting card. Honestly, very interesting, actually. But you need th at least three spells for it to work. I think people experiment with it. This is like one of those right cards where like you look over it and it's not very interesting in the beginning. But perhaps it eventually sees play in the metagame. So I don't want to overlook this card. And I would look out for it to see if like a deck can exist that utilizes this. But even at the best case scenario, if you have four cards, four spells in hand, you're getting a 3-5. If you have five, you're getting a three mana, 3-6, three, which is actually pretty good. But if we're running that many spells, I can't see it being an aggro deck, and it would have, probably have to be control deck, and then I don't see it being very good. So, um, the, while the upside is very good, the other downside is that it doesn't make sense for the type of deck synergy you'd want. If this had taunt, I think this card would be insane, but it doesn't, so. Uh, Bronze Gatekeeper, this will see experimentation. If mech decks are good, it'll 100% PC play. Bulldozer, this is the new um, uh, Force Tank Max, which also wasn't played. Close Kill Chemist, Divine Shield Stealth. Uh, seems kind of bad. This isn't even a mech. Um, Copper Tail Imposter gains stealth until the next turn. This has potential because it's a stealth mech that you can magnetize things to, but it comes at 4 mana, so I'm not sure. Um, Crystallizer, deal 5 damage to your hero, gain 5 armor. Um, we'll see play in heal. Uh, heal Zoo, 100%. I don't think it's that great in Warrior because even though you're 1 mana gain 5 armor, uh, actually, 1 mana gain 5 armor is significant. Well, it's not gain 5 armor. It's transform 5 health into 5 armor. And if you already have armor, it's not that great. We'll see experimentation in Warrior. We'll be played in Heelzu. Damage Stegotron. Taunt deals 6 damage to this minion. So this is a 6 mana 5-6 taunt. Mech, though. 
I love the flavor of this card. I think it'll be experimented with in a mech deck. EMP Operative. Um, I think this should have been Silence instead of Destroy, but um, potentially we'll see play. This is the card that inhibits like mech decks the most, so Blizzard might have actually punched themselves in the dick by printing this, but oh well. Electro Weight. If you're holding a spell that costs 5 or more, gain plus 1, plus 1. Um, actually, 3 mana, 4-4. Four, four. But what kind of tempo deck runs spells that cost more than 5 consistently that you could play it at this card at 3 mana? I'm not sure. For that reason, I think it'll be experimented with this. Much like this will be experimented with. But I don't know in what kind of deck they could even work is the problem. Explodinator. Summon 2, zero, 2 Goblin Bombs. I don't think this card's that great. But this is one of those sleeper again. I could be wrong. Um, Faithful Lum Lumi, uh, give a friendly mech plus one plus one, would be great in an aggressive mech deck if that exists. Galvanizer, reduce the cost of mechs in your hand by one, would be great in an aggressive mech or uh, or control mech to be honest. Giggling Inventor, summon two one two mechs with Taunt Divine Shield. This is actually pretty good, could be seen in a token aggressive deck, could be seen in a control mech deck that has magnetized stuff, because then you magnetize to Divine Taunt uh, mechs. And this card actually I think we'll see play. Goblin Bomb, I think this card's shit. Arbiter Celestia, I think this card's shit. Holomancer, after your opponent plays minions, summon a one. I think this card's shit. Uh, kaboom, Death Rattle, deal four damage to a random enemy minion. Uh, I'm comparing this to that one priest card, the two mana, or no, no, the elemental card, the two mana, one one, deal three damage to an enemy minion. This is three mana, two two, deal four damage, but it's a mech, so maybe it'll see play. Um, Lewis Westman, deal six for damage randomly split among other friendly. Deal 6 damage randomly split amongst other friendly minions. Wow, this card's bad. Mechanical Whelp will be experimented in Mech Death Rattle Hunter, 100%. Same thing with Kaboom Bot, it'll be experimented. Mechron, summon a 1 1 Geobot, uh, will be experimented in the aggressive mech decks. Mechathune will be experimented in a control um, deck, probably by Druid, because Druid draws cards the best. Will it work? I don't know. If it does, that just horrifies me, because that means Druid will have multiple. Insane combo decks. Um, okay. This summons three mana, four, three of stats, but they're mechs that you can fuse to potentially. Um, but I think this is kind of a worse version than this, so probably won't be great. Missile launcher at the end of the turn, deal four damage to one, da wait, one damage to all other characters. Oh, at the end of the turn, so this is like mini Baron Gun. Um, yeah. Seems okay. Uh, it has magnetic, though. That's what matters the most. Omega Defender. 10 mana crystals gain 10, ta uh, 10 attack. Not sure which deck runs it is the only problem. Piloted Reaper. Death Threat. I'll summon a random minion from your hand that costs 2 or less. Hey! I know what this card is. Hey! This card is back. It's Piloted Shredder. Wow. They reprinted Piloted Shredder. Almost. Okay. So, obviously not. Okay. Here's the thing. This is worse than Shredder in the sense that you are losing card advantage. Uh, or, sorry, Shredder kind of... Uh, it's hard to explain, but... Shredder was almost like a zero in card advantage. Or, I mean, sorry, Reaper. Because you play the minion from hand, um, which means you get it out faster, which is pretty good. But that's minus one from your hand and plus one on the board. That's kind of zero in card economy. Shredder summoned one out of a random card pool, which means it was plus one in card economy, which is really good for an aggro deck. The other thing that's really good, though, is the fact that you could control your own minions, uh, and that Reaper lets you do that. So this actually isn't a strict downgrade from Shredder because your minions might be stronger than random two drops. This will see play. There might be a mid-range... Okay, this card single-handedly makes me think there might be potentially a mid-range slash uh, early game mech deck. Replicating Menace. Summon three 1-1 one, one Microbots. Magnetic. Mm, I think for four mana, it's a bit expensive. This card might single-handedly also enable the Paladin decks. Um, I looked at Paladin and said, wow, their cards depend so hard on uh, on what neutral mechs are good. And I think Pilot of Reaper is great. Wow, this card might single-handedly recreate a mid-range mech deck. Okay. Rusty Recycler. Taunt Lifesteal mech. Five mana, two six. Lifesteal matters, it's a mech. This might see play. Because you can magnetize the mechs. Again, the magnetic mechanic single-handedly also makes cards like this that I normally wouldn't think are very good, potentially good. Okay. c 4 and Bomber. Shuffle a bomb into your opponent's deck when it explodes for 5 damage. I think someone will make a meme combo deck, but I don't think it'll actually be good. Skaterbot, Magnetic Rush. Card's crazy, um, 
but the problem is on its own it's kind of bad it's mostly used for comboing to give your mechs rush and plus one plus one a one of mana spell that says give your give a mech plus one plus one and rush um i think is actually pretty good and the fact that you can play it just as deal one damage extra is not bad so uh, i think this card will see play uh spark drill rush death rattle add two one one sparks with rush to your hand uh oh it's a rush card okay so six mana deal five that's not great four mana deal five would be better you five mana, you five, but you add extra cards with rush to your hand. I'm assuming those cost one, so seven, eight, eight mana deal seven. I don't think that card's really good. Spark engine, add a one one spark with rush to your hand. Um, this doesn't have rush itself, so I don't think it's very good. Spring rocket, battle to cry, deal two damage. That costs too much. It's three mana. Even the Cthulhu card, the three mana two one that dealt two. Um, that card. I think people tried to experiment it in non Cthulhu decks, but it wasn't very good. Starliner, this card won't see play. Steel Rager, <laughs> a meme, has the highest chance of any of the Ragers to see play. I don't. I still don't think it'll... Wow, it's a 4-mana deal 5. 4-mana deal 5 makes me think it has potential. Because, again, mech means it can be magnetized, which means that even if you don't kill something with it, it's not bad. Has potential. Subject 9 has potential because you're drawing 5 different secrets. I think the most likely decks it gets played in are Hunter and uh, uh, and Paladin. I think Hunter might run like like two of three different uh, secrets and then one ofs of like two other ones to get the most value out of this. So you potentially draw five. Most likely you're probably drawing around three. It's potential. Battlecry, give your weapon plus one attack. Uh, I don't know what deck fits into it that weapons eat. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Kingsbane Rogue. I just don't know if this is impactful enough for Kingsbane Rogue. Uh, can only attack if you cast a spell this turn. This is pretty bad. Upgrade will frame bot. We'll see play if mechs are good. War gear. We'll see play if mechs are good. Uh, weaponized pinata is kind of a meme card. I don't think you'll see play. Summon a zero two goblin bomb. Kind of bad. Whiz bang. Okay. Zeliax pretty good. Um, I gotta say, not taking the time together to put together a proper mech deck to see what works. But the minions themselves seem pretty good. You have Zeliax. You have frame bot. You have war gear. Steel Rager, those are ones that I think are pretty decent. Rusty, um, and then plus the random class ones that you uh, get from Hunter, Warrior, and Paladin. Uh, I think Hunter isn't amazing in this sense because the only one that really supports Hunter's Death Rattle strategy is the Mechanical Whelp. The other ones are just like mechs, right? I think Paladin's actually, um, because uh, because of the one piloted Shredder, um, actually does have potential with like things like Glotron and Noia Module. And I think Warrior... Warrior on its own, even if it didn't have great mechs, uh, it wouldn't have to play the mech strategy. I think Warrior on its own would just have to, like, these cards would just have to be good enough to carry over a control warrior strategy. So, that is a speed rundown. I did it as fast as I could. Of the cards in the Boomsday expansion. Uh, we did this in just under an hour. It's 57 minutes now. My voice hurts. My back of the sinus is sore. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I, I hope I'm right. So uh, this is going to be Jack signing out.